Ho, ho. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What a heck of a day. What a heck of a day. Guys, I, I helped, uh, helped a dear friend of mine relocate. Great friend of mine, dear, dear, dear person of my life. Golly, just, just, a, just a magnificent day. So continuing the Solidity series, we are going to learn about reverting transactions. All right, guys, let, let's let's get let's get some vibes going. Let's get some vibes going. I just recorded a a, a SAS, SAS episode for the Business Engineering Club. It's 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 a thing, you know. So check check that out. Check that out. But let's dive in. Let's dive in. So we've been building up to this class this lesson for quite a while now. It's time to learn about reverting transactions in Solidity. What is reverting transactions? It's it's when a transaction goes bad. It needs to be undone, I imagine. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to detect an error and immediately halt the smart contract code, stopping any further execution of the transaction that the code is running it and refunding any remaining gas to the user. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so, so hopefully a transaction, if, if something goes bad, you don't get screwed. It doesn't get locked in a contract, things like that. The EVM gives us a few days to stop a transaction or roll back any state changes and emitted events with the revert EVM opcode. Okay, so in versions later than Solidity 0.0, there are three ways to express errors in Solidity. They are assert, require, revert. Okay, enough talk. Let's dig in. Let's do it. Let's do it, guys. I'm, I'm going to get a sip of this, this Pellegrino, you know. I, I, it would be amazing is getting a sponsor by Pellegrino. Wouldn't that just be a great, you know, turtleneck? Like, like Pellegrino, someone, if someone knows Pellegrino and how to make this happen, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. How fantastic that would be. Because I, I drink so many of these, and it's, it's my favorite sparkling water. It really is. Okay, so reverting transactions. In the EVM, the main opcode to revert a transaction is revert. This, this, is, this is straightforward. This is great. These are the three, way, three main ways to invoke the revert opcode from Solidity, assert, require, and revert. We'll focus on the last two for now, so require and revert. Uh, see the details sections for more about assert. We'll just briefly gaze it over real quick. Assert, okay, boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's just see how it looks. Assert address it looks like it should never be zero. Assert, let's see, withdraw everything. Okay, so assert, assume basically is what I'm reading is assume that this address balance will be zero. Okay, so, so a require statement has two forms. Boom, require this, a Boolean, and then you can have an optional error message associated with it. So, okay, so these will revert the same if some Boolean condition is false. Okay, so we can use these to check for all kinds of conditions. The revert keyword also has two forms. Revert some error message, revert some custom error message with arguments within it. Notice that either way, revert does the does not take a Boolean condition, but require does. So what's the difference? Revert will always revert. So you will usually see it wrapped in a conditional statement. If some condition, if some Boolean event, revert with some custom error, boom, boom, boom. Is it actually called some custom error? Is that a like keyword you, you, need to, you need to use? Okay, so both revert and require use the revert opcode. They just provide different syntaxes to do such. The recommended approach is to use the custom errors. In most cases, they provide a gas efficient way to identify and debug issues. Great. A custom error function is identified by the first four bytes of the, the is that cash, 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 cash or something? K cash? Is that, is that how to pronounce that? K cash? Hash of, of its condition, of its how do we, how do we print it? These, these are big words, guys. These, these, of its can, canonical? Is it, is it, golly, golly. You know, they, they, sh, they should have put a, put a person up here who's, who's, you know, I might have a college education, but, but how do you pronounce these things? You know, now, now I feel like the college education never taught me how to pronounce this. Let's, let's see real quick. I, I wanted to say ketchup, ketchup, but it just, you know, it just, ketchak, ketchak, ketchak. <laughs> canonical, okay, can, canonical. Can, canonical, canonical. Well, we'll roll with canonical. The the chat hash and the it's canonical representation, which includes its name and parameter types. In contrast, using string literals for its error message or messages can consume more, many more bytes, as we discussed in our lessons on string literals. Your goal: require one ether at a payable constructor method that requires one ether deposit. If at least one ether is not sent to the constructor, revert the transactions. Moving my face, there are globally available ether units such as ether that you can use instead of having to convert way from one ether to one ether to 18. Okay, so 
our goal, we want to add a, what, what was it? A payable constructor. So I believe this would need to be external payable, right? That requires, ooh, guys, ooh, ooh, I took a day off yesterday just to like, you know, just, I, I, I have been coding for months straight. And yesterday was the first day I took off, right? My brain's already like, I, I, I need to be back in it. I need to be back in it. The fingers are slow, you know? Okay, so let's see. Constructor external payable. Add a payable constructor method that requires at least one ether to deposit. So we require ether. If that's not right, there, there's no way. If at least one ether is not sent to the constructor, revert the transaction. So let's think about it. So we had we had we had our our success statements, right? So bool success uh, was some call right dot call. I'll say some some val call. Is this where it's saying the ether needs to be here? One ether here, right? Is that is that what it is? And then require success for that. I feel it's going to be more something this speed. Okay, let's let let's test. Let's see what see what we're doing here. Call one ether. Let's give it a value, some val. Yeah, guys, I'm I'm not sure. Let's let's take a piece at the code real quick. Let's just get, get, do a little gimme real quick. Oh, so we we were we were roughly. Oh no, no, we were overdoing it. Okay, so it's just to require the, the message dot value needs to be greater than or equal than one ether. Well, that was a lot easier than than what I was doing there. I was definitely over convoluting it. So let's let's go ahead and get this wrapped up here. Let's say require message dot value greater than or equal to one ether else not enough ether sent right does it have us say the specific uh message it needs to be what is going on with the 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 syntax thing again golly okay there it goes it's weird it like it like types on the right side sometimes there okay i think it's fixed so we have constructor external relevant source parts oh, guys 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 golly okay what's What's the deal? Contract constructor or word version 8.20 constructor payable. We did external payable. So it's not supposed to be external payable. It's just supposed to be a payable function. I'm not sure if I fully comprehend then the external payable deal. Okay, let's move forward. Let's move forward. We're, we're going to get back into it. We're going to get back into the, the, the gel of it. Let's see. So, okay. So restricting by address, we can provide certain roles to an address. For instance, let's say we had an address with the privilege of creating new game items. Okay. So just depending some address, the, the term item creator, maybe game item creator, and then, and then passing in the address that could do that. Okay. So, so error, if you're not the game item creator, then you get a error here. So not game item creator, where is this supposed to be a function or is this the error that gets thrown? This function uh, read item may be public, but there's only one address that can call it without the transaction reverting. Okay, so your goal, owner withdrawal, create a public function withdrawal that will withdraw all funds. So we wanna go function withdraw, that will withdraw all funds from the contract and send them to the deployer of the contract. So I imagine we have to have the address deployer, right? Let's see, let's see. Require that only the deployer address is allowed. Okay, this is this is getting a little bit interesting, a little bit fun, guys. Okay, so we need create a public function withdrawal that will withdraw all the funds from the contract. So I forget how it goes. It's address this dot balance, I believe, right? And that should be all of the funds. And we need to send that to the deployer. Okay, so do we say deployer? This this is this is I think where we can actually use our Boolean success deal. We have bytes in memory right here, I think, but but we don't need that. So we could say deployer dot, is it call value, boom, this, I believe that's what the deployer is gonna get. And we need to require, right? That's what it says, require only the deployer. So we need to require success maybe, and action relevant storage source parts here, start with other lines. Oh, we need to make sure it's a, a, a payable deal as well. Maybe external payable address this dot balance right isn't that paired identifier address this dot balance i thought this was the address of the smart contract when you do address dot this or address this is the smart contract right and then dot balance would be the the balance within the smart contract okay so create a public function withdrawal that withdraws all funds from the contract and send them to the deployer of the contract require that only the deployer the contract is allowed to call this function. So we need to do something like this. So uh, if address is not the deployers, basically, 
we can say returned. So it should just stop right there if, if it's not the deployer's address. Address is not equal to the deployer, but do we need to pass in an address to this function is the question. I've got a lot of questions. I've got a lot of questions, guys. So the address is not, huh. And then do we need to throw an error if, if they require that only the deployer can call this function? For all the other addresses, this thing should revert. So we can say revert. So how about this? We'll say this, and then we'll put return. So first it'll revert, and then it won't continue the function here. I revert, not not item creator, and we'll rename this to not, not contract deployer, or maybe even contract owner or something. Uh, but th that's fine. That's fine. So where do we need to do one of these for the return? Can you do a return revert? Is that a thing? Revert. Questions, 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 folks. Questions, questions, questions. I really thought we were onto something here. I feel like we are. I feel like I feel like we're close. I feel like I feel like we're close. Where we're deploying. When the constructor fires off, does that also need to set the deployer to the person who? De I think I think we need to do that. So uh, address maybe deployer to maybe we need to do something like this. Make sure the deployer gets set first of all, right? And then not a contract deployer. So that's that's not defined. That's what I was wondering over here. So it's it's not defined, right? Not item creator. They don't like have it defined here. So so does this need to be a thing of not item creator? I'll just I'll just say revert, I suppose, or return for now. Let's see if it'll at least fire off something for us. No, okay. I'm, st I'm still just just brains trying to figure it out, right? So so we're 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 passing in the deployer. Ho hopefully that that is part of their test where the deployer gets configured here. We're setting the deployer on construction and we're using that now. We're checking the value if that address, oh, this this is important. So withdraw, uh, we could say withdraw address, right? If address does not equal deployer, that's that's probably actually a little bit more relevant here. So if, if the address isn't the deployer's address, revert and send the message. So I, I, think, I think we have the rough scheme of, of what they're asking for, just the syntax isn't, isn't quite there. But but roughly what, what I'm, I'm saying is we, we have a piece in memory of we're storing the, the address of the deployer. We're setting it on construction of the contract. So when the contract gets deployed, we're, we're running that constructor. And, and I don't know if they're passing in a deployer address or not, but I'm, I'm kind of assuming it. And then let's, let's make this payable instead of external. Let's see what we do. But our withdrawal function seems to be somewhat logically there where if the address being passed in isn't the deployer's address, isn't this one, the one that we set up here, revert it, return it, don't allow for this function to continue. But if it is, if it is the address, then then obviously we're gonna ignore that bit of logic and then the function would run this. So it would do deployer.call value and then send the the remaining balance of the contract, assuming it goes through, it, it, it acts with, a, is it is it called a atomicity? But it acts as an atomic function where it requires it's an all or nothing thing. It has to be successful, otherwise it. I think I think that's basically what what it's teaching us with reverting transactions is is basically these these contracts are atomic, meaning it's an all or none, meaning all everything has to go through or or it doesn't or it doesn't work. So how do I how do I think of it or describe an atomic function? If if I have a database where I have a project and then I have a name for so I have a I have like Ryan's project, but then I also have like Ryan's name like Ryan's profile maybe stored in another part of the database. So two different tables or two different databases. Atomic means if we want to delete the project or maybe maybe when I say delete account or something, we want to delete everything from that account. Now, realistically, you don't, but but in this example, just to prove atomicity, I think it's called atomicity or to prove the atomic functions is is saying with Ryan's account, the profile information that's over here. So my name, maybe last name, maybe phone number, all that stuff that exists separate to like maybe the, the, the product itself. So if I have a project with like all Ryan's projects and then Ryan's account, when I press delete all, basically in order for that function to work, it needs to delete both these things. If it only deletes the projects, but doesn't delete the account, that means it's not atomic. It means it's a failed or it would fail the atomic transaction if it del or vice versa if it just deleted the profile but not the projects so it, it wouldn't pass it the, the function would re revert or return and but atomic means it has to delete all parts or or it doesn't work so it's, a, it's an all or none situation and that's that's what we're we're learning here as well is that the requires and the all or none let's let's see what the code really is or should be see where we're kind of i think i think we were we were kind of right with some of this stuff so boom address owner great we send the owner 
Oh, I see. So the message dot sender. We we have a similar thing, just passing in the address, or it was assuming the the address was passed in. So so right idea, right with building the address deployer and then saying address owner. Um, and then require message sender equals owner. So we just I see I, I'm not using the message sender. It seems seems to be the problem. And they're using the transfer thing, which is another kind of larger thing to do this instead of this way we were doing on the left. So, so let's update it. Let's, let's try to try to configure this proper. Okay. So the deployer needs to be the message dot sender. And it looks like that they put it up here. They're not receiving it. They're just always having access to the message dot sender. And then it's saying require, require deployer equals message dot sender. And then we need to get this one right too. So function withdrawal. Did you mean public? Did I mean public? Let's try. Let's try. So public payable function withdrawal. Okay. So address is not, we're going to go back to an old one real quick, just to see how, how they, or how we wrote it in the previous ones of sending ether. Let's see. So owner.call message dot value. Yeah. All right. Oh, I see. This needs to be public. Oops. Or does it, or does it, right? Where am I? For any contracts. Here we go. Address. Maybe we tried deployer call address, learn and learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. And okay, let's send the ether. Let's steal this, right? And basically the reason why I want to do it this way is I want to get in, in the habit of doing the, the quote unquote lower level code. Oops, not the call data one. We are reverting transactions. Sorry guys, I, I keep, my face is in the way, so I keep messing it up. Calling or reverting transactions, that's where we're at, boom. But I wanna get used to using the lower level code one, but I thought thought this would at least, yeah, be the, oh, address is spelled with two Ds. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh, so funny, so funny, you know. Couldn't, couldn't pronounce the, the, the caca, the ketchup one, you know, and then, and then the, the can, can, canonical one. Okay. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. So that's what it was. Let's, let's maybe just overview what's going on again. So we build a piece of state real quick or piece of, piece of memory of the deployer or the owner, if you will. We set that deployer to the message sender, and then we require that the deployer must be the message sender. And then we send ultimately the funds if that is, is the case. Okay. Sweet, sweet. Owner modifier, function modifiers. We can write modifiers on functions to run logic before and or after the function body. Nice, nice. Okay, let's see an example. So we have the function modifier right here, public view log modifier. And then we have modified log modifier. We have before, looks like an underscore and then after. So what is this? Let's say we call log message, which is this function right here. What would you expect the body of this message to be before, during, after? Before, during, after. Interesting. Is that, is that what it would, would be? It would be before, during, after. So it asserts this right here. Is that what I see? Why? Notice the log message function signature is decorated with the log modifier. I see that with the log modifier right there. And uh, this modifier can add behavior to the function before and after the function body runs the, the underscore, the modifier. It does do that. So it does assert it there. And the modifier body where the function body of the modified function will run. That's great. That's awesome. Okay, so our goal, you'll notice that the only owner modifier has been added to each of the configuration functions in this contracts. Only problem is it doesn't currently do anything. That is a problem. Update the only modifier to require that the only, or excuse me, that only the owner address can call these functions without reverting. Remember to use the underscore to indicate where the function body should go. Okay, so require only owner access. So, so hold on one more time. One more time. I'm kind of kind of mentally mentally trying to download this still. So you'll notice that the only owner modified modifier has has been added to each of the configuration functions in the contract. So only owner, only owner, only owner. The modified right here has been added to each of the or right here. So boom. Only problem is it doesn't currently do anything. Update the only owner address to, to require that only the owner can do it. Okay, so let's say, so we'll say require, we'll basically require this. We'll have the same logic here, require that. Let's try, oh, and then we'll add that. Require only owner. What does it say? No matching declaration. Oh, that's what we needed. Sweet, sweet guys, we did it, we did it. So, so all of these functions will continue running 
after this this first thing is is done it's it'll then continue the functions here is what it's saying that's cool that's cool so maybe we could build another modifier real quick just to just to test can we can we redecorate more code can we can we just uh i guess do something like this and just <laughs> like double check right double check owner right and maybe maybe we can say i don't know I, I wonder if this will work or not right this this is what i love about about software and stuff is just breaking stuff figuring out how it works figuring out what breaks stuff okay so owner does not work well we didn't have owner here we have double check owner that's what really what we have and we also have a weird bug going on where it's doing the right side deal but let's try it double check owner sweet so you could it looks like you can decorate more of these that's what this would be called like put 10 of these here if you wanted i suppose here cool so we'll, we'll keep we'll keep moving forward that's good to know that's good to know yes oh that's that's the last one okay cool well all right that was uh that was just a wholesome thing getting back into the speed and and obviously reverting transactions is is very important with the the smart contract stuff we learned about the atomic functions or at least the idea of it we we learned about the the require here this deal of just being able to require things and just just using the message dot value for call data and and appending an error message with it and uh, and then requiring and using that that require message in conjunction with with function logic which is awesome we have that only owner uh, which is huge so learning learning what this underscore does is pretty awesome so we 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 have the requires the reverts the modifiers and then i i gave a little bit of information on atomic functions guys that's awesome and and what do we have up for next week is calling contracts or, or next episode we have calling contracts that's awesome i'm i'm really really excited for this so we're going to learn probably about call data and i bet i bet that's going to be replacing some of this message.value stuff so we'll actually learn about the the unique call data from a unique wallet or something or another contract or an eoa so those are my speculations on it but let's 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 tune in and see should be a good time i will see you guys on the next one